Okay, so I'm going to take off with uh, meniscus repair. We know that meniscus repair uh, has very specific indications and prerequisites. Tear has to be in the vascular zone, so the RR or the RW. It should be an unstable tear because if it's stable, we don't need to put any devices. The meniscal body should be intact and most important, the knee should be stable or made stable during the procedure, good alignment and good cartilage. We know we the type of repairs are three types, the out to in, the in to out and the all inside. What I'm going to talk today about is the all inside devices, which are these are the, something new in the market that we're using. So all inside meniscal repair is a demanding technique. It requires specific devices. And the basic configuration consists of two peaks, which flip on the outer side of the capsule and a two zero fiber, which co-apps the meniscal tear. Then there are different launching devices, different needle devices, which can launch the peak into the meniscal capsule. We have different devices available by different companies consisting of the peak and the 2 zero fiber and a cinching knot which co-apps the meniscus very strongly. So this is a continuous video. We can see a posterior horn medial meniscus tear. A rasp is used to open up the biology. And all inside meniscal device is then used. The first pass is made. And then the first T1 or the first peak is launched on the outer side of the capsule. And then the second pass is made about 2 to 3 millimeters away. We can do it in the kind of configuration we want. And as we cinch it, it nicely co-apps the meniscal tear, thus completing the all inside meniscal repair. We know that meniscus has important function with respect to load distribution, stability and congruence. And this is by respect of the hoop tensions, which are maintained because each meniscus has two roots, two bony anchorage points, anterior and posterior. And this, when this one of these roots tear, which we call a root tear, there is complete loss of hoop tension. And this behaves like a complete or a total meniscectomy. Now, this is what we do when we deal with a posterior horn medial meniscus root tear. We have very fine devices as narrow as two to three millimeters. The cartilage is debrided at the region of the insertion of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. And these knee scorpion devices are beautiful. They go between the space of about two to three millimeters. We first fire the first pass. I typically use a number one ethylon as a shuttling suture because I like a number two gauge fiber wire to hold my entire construct. I pass it two times so that I get a footprint kind of repair. And then we drill a wire from the anteromedial tibia into the prepared footprint. The ethylon is then shuttled with a two number fiber in a slip knot kind of configuration. The guide wire previously played is overreened with an endoscopic reamer. And then the number two fiber are pulled out onto the anteromedial aspect and tied either with a push lock, a swivel lock or a simple suture disc or an endo button, thus completing the root tear repair. So very good coaptation, very strong hold in the meniscal posterior root. So this is the post-operative picture. We can see the position of the tunnels. So this is something new that we are seeing. We are seeing ramp tears very newly identified, although described previously. So they are typically longitudinal tears in the peripheral attachment of the menisco capsular and more specifically the menisco tibial part of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. Very commonly seen in patients having uh, ACL tears. And if we don't know these tears, we're going to miss them. The reason being, anteriorly these tears look normal. We need to go into the posterior medial compartment and do a needle test to identify these ram tears. So this is a case of an ACL tear patient. You can see that the meniscus is almost normal, but you can see a little capsular avulsion that can be seen. And moment I go into the posterior medial portal, pass a needle into the posterior medial compartment, you see the little rent which separates the posterior most aspect of the meniscus from the capsule. So this is called a needle test where a needle is introduced from the posterior medial compartment and it can be used as a probe to study your ram tear. And these tears need to be repaired. So we convert that needle into a cannula. We use a rasp to freshen the tear. And then various passing devices are available to pass a suture across this tear. The sutures are then retrieved back into the cannula and then we use uh, the routine arthroscopic knot tying techniques to complete the ramp repair. Depending on the size of the ramp tear, we may either use one, two or three knots. So this is very similar to what we do in a bank cards repair.
but it is located posteromedially and hence we need to look for these tears in any case of an anterior cruciate ligament injury. So this would be a completed product of a ram tear repair. So we'll, I'll, I'll just show you a, a, a case of a complex meniscal tear. He had come with an ACL tear, a complete MCL tear for femur and a complex tear of the lateral meniscus. So this was the findings in the diagnostic arthroscopy. His medial compartment completely opened up. So there was a drive through sign positive as his MCL was incompetent. And in the acute phase, we found out that the lateral meniscus was very badly torn. There was a component of a radial tear through and through. You can see the blood clot. And there was a delamination tear of the lateral meniscus as well. So we use these different devices available. They are very low profile devices available now. And we can put sutures in different configuration the way we want it. So I'm using a knee scorpion to coapt the two ends of the radial tear of the lateral meniscus. Because I see a little opening, I take one more suture pass to shut that opening gap in the lateral meniscus. And once I finish putting my arthroscopic knot, the two ends are very well coapted. But however, it was stable, unstable from the capsule and thus we use an in-to-out technique to put the entire construct against the capsule. So at the end, we had a very good construct nicely holding the lateral meniscus together. After about three months, when I went in to do an arthroscopic ACL reconstruction, these were the findings. You could see the prominent knots, prominent sutures are very nicely covered with fibrous tissue. I cannot palpate or probe a meniscal cleavage defect which was there presently. So there was some vascular kind of tissue holding the entire meniscus and this is only three months into the post-operative period. So there is a very good attempt of meniscal healing, specifically in injuries which are acute. And I feel we should capture the moment in an acute ACL tear to go in and finish the repairs and then do the ACL reconstruction in a stage manner afterwards. So once upon a time we used to excise the entire bucket but today we repair the entire meniscus. Uh, almost 7 to 8 stitches are used on the surface, below the surface and they are tied on the posteromedial capsule thus repairing the entire bucket with the posteromedial capsule. What is new? We are now using platelet rich plasma. Blood is aspirated from uh, the veins about 30 ml centrifuge and the PRP is then injected in between the meniscal cleavage and then the sutures are tight so it holds the clot in position. Similarly, fibrin glue can be used. The fibrin glue is prepared on the back trolley, kept in a sponge, all the blood removed and the fibrin is cut with a blade to shape and then it is passed with a hemostat into the tear and the sutures can be tightened on that. To conclude, meniscal repair has very specific indications, very specific prerequisites. Yes, it is technical demanding, requires training and the rehab is much more or prolonged than we do a meniscectomy. The different techniques that we are using to enhance very preliminary in the stage today and we are still in an enigmatous position on how to go about repairing a tear in the WW zone. Thank you.